Lake Effect continues now. I'm Mitch Tyke. A funny thing happened to adult musicians Mary Carlson, Carmen Nickerson, and Angel Rohde. They started noticing their audiences getting younger and younger. Actually, what really happened was that Carlson, a singer-songwriter with plenty of adult fans, started writing songs for kids. She brought in her musician friends and created the Chickadees, a Milwaukee-based group whose songs touch on environmental themes and whose concerts draw legions of fairly compact fans. Mary, Carmen, and Angel joined us in Lake Effect Studio A recently and started by playing the eponymous track from their CD called Songs from the Great Outdoors, a song called, of course, Chickadee. Welcome, all of you, to Lake Effect. Thank you. Thank you. Chickadee. Uh, You all come to the genre of children's music with backgrounds playing for, uh, how should I put this, uh, somewhat older audiences. Do you remember what you thought when you first looked out at your audience and it was full of kids? From my point of view, I was getting um, a little bit tired of playing for adult audiences because sometimes you go in and you're in a good mood and... Um, people stand there with their arms crossed and this attitude of entertain me. I paid five dollars to see you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the first time we went, we played at uh, uh, Schlitz Audubon um, preschool. They had an event, and we showed up to play. And from the first note, the kids looked like they were all on caffeine, and <laughs> like they looked like they had eaten jumping beans, and they're bopping around, and they were having so much fun, and and it felt like, oh my, this is kind of how music should feel. People appreciate it; they were just loving it. And you could mm-hmm. make mistakes, and you could be yourself, and uh, you didn't feel like you had to be the serious musician with this message. It was very liberating for me. What do you think, Angel? Absolutely. Same for me. It was um, what a what a great, loving, generous group those youngsters are. <laughs> yes, they love you even though we're not perfect. The only thing I have to keep reminding myself is uh, keep it clean, keep it clean. <laughs> not that I'm often not clean, but you remind yourself. We, you know, we, when you're looking at the five-year-olds. Yeah, we played a show. We played Kids Fest, and uh, we have the song about owls. And uh, I asked the kids, usually at shows, to, uh, you know, hoot along with us. And for some reason, so I, I introduced the song, and uh, I said, um, okay, we need some really big hooters on this song. <laughs> Where are the hooters? <laughs> and this, I could see this dad in the back just dying laughing. So I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't contain myself. So you do have to kind of watch what you say and, you know, how you say it. Tell me how the story of this group happened. Mary Carlson, it had to do with your kids, right? Basically, I, um, I settled here in Milwaukee, got married, had two kids, um, decided I wasn't going to tour anymore because it was just uh, not the thing to do. You have kids and you make that decision. Um, well, some people do, and some people can afford nannies and do all that <laughs> thing. But So I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to stick around here. And uh, my kids went to Audubon in Bayside. They went to the preschool there, and it's uh, a premier nature preschool in the country. So I started sitting in on classes and volunteering, and uh, it just came naturally. I just started hearing all these songs in my head, and I'd bring the guitar into class and, and, and play for the kids. And uh, uh, I was doing the grown-up music when I first moved here to Milwaukee, and Angel and Carmen would come and sing um, in, my, in my band. So I said, oh, I got these ideas for kids' songs, and uh, we sing really well together, I think. Maybe not, but I think yeah, yeah. we do some good singing together, <laughs> three-part harmonies. We've done some good things. So uh, <laughs> it just came naturally, and they came over, and we just started singing and playing. And well, What did it take to, to convince the two of you to play children's music? Oh, it didn't take any convincing. I just, Mary said, do you want to sing this project? And I just said, Sure. Absolutely. What fun. This has been so much fun. Don't tell Mary, but I would do this for free. (laughs) (laughs) It was also kind of an excuse to hang out together because I feel like I'm so busy all the time with the kids and the work and this and the that. 
and I never get to see these two. So it was kind of like, oh, if I could have an excuse to tell my husband that I actually had to work but could hang out with them, then it would make things easier. So this is maybe just a front. <laughs> How important was it to you to approach this kind of music from a, an adult or grown-up sensibility that is provided you see yourself as approaching it with an adult sensitivity? I mean, it, it's it, it's kids' music, but it doesn't necessarily sound like Mary had a little lamb. The only adult thing I thought about was that the educational aspect. I think toddlers, preschoolers, which is kind of what we are aiming at, learn best by repetition. So I put in a ton of courses, made it simple, and made it funny. Because if it's not funny, um, I don't think kids learn. I'm just guessing because I don't have any kind of background in education. But I know with my kids, the second that I make them laugh, their ears perk up and their attention is focused. So that's all I thought about from the adult aspect is repetition, try to make it funny. And then I would just bounce stuff off the kids, you know, and put in a bathroom joke every now and then. and <laughs> They love it. Do you feel like, I mean, certainly having young kids yourself, uh, that you wanted to do music that didn't necessarily sound like old school children's music? Well, I wanted it to be, you know, I didn't want it to be Mary Had a Little Lamb or Itsy Bitsy Spider, and I wanted it to be organic and have a lot of natural sounds to it because it seems like there's um, Itsy Bitsy Spider and then it goes to Hannah Montana and there's no in-between. And I wanted something a little more wholesome, a little more um, not so, I don't want to hear any screaming guitars. You know, when you're five, you're just trying to hear the melody and the words, so I wanted to make it simple. They're really beautiful little songs. The one thing we hear a lot from parents is that they don't mind this being in the CD player over and over and over again because they're really pretty little songs to listen to. It's not um, annoying like... Yeah, any parent that, that has a, you know, you got Barney in your car and you're you're scratching your eyes out after like the second play. So, <laughs> What about another song? Okay, we're going to uh, talk a little bit. Uh, the chickadees like to talk about uh, nature and seasons and birds and trees. So... Uh, I went out with my daughters. We have a big oak tree in our backyard. And uh, one fall, we went out there, and we could see the acorns hanging off the trees, but we didn't see any on the ground. So we were wondering where all the acorns were going, and it turned into a big mystery that we had to solve. And so I went and wrote this song about um, acorns falling from the big oak tree so that they would remember that acorns are from an oak tree. <clears throat> and uh, then we had to solve the mystery. So this song will help you remember where all your acorns are going. fall from the big oak tree there's one in my backyard we went looking for some yesterday but it was really hard to find one hard to find one oh here's the mystery acorn acorn who's got the acorn 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 who's got the acorn is it you is it me or is it someone we can't see? We went looking all around the ground But no acorns to be found Just some sticks and stones And Tommy found a toad with two horns on his head Horns on his head Horns So we said, where are the acorns? Toad said, Acorn, acorn, who's got the acorn? Acorn, acorn, who's got the acorn? Is it you or is it me? Or is it someone we can't see? And then the toad said, Hey, come on down here. I've got a little secret for you. If you're real quiet and real still for a long, long time, you, yes you, might get the answer you want, the answer you want. So we were real quiet and real still for a long, long time. And then suddenly, down the big oak tree came two furry, enormous, ferocious squirrels. Squirrels, yes, and their mouths were full of our acorns. Ooh. Acorn, acorn, who's got the acorn? Is it you or 
is in me? Or is it the squirrel up in the tree? Acorn, acorn, who's got the acorn? You know, that little mommy squirrel, she had a purse, and it was made out of an acorn. She had a hat on, that was an acorn. And the daddy squirrel, he had a briefcase, that was made out of an acorn too. And he had on a little squirrel vest, and that was one of our acorns too. Guess what they had on their little squirrel feet? Acorns. No, shoes. That's where all my barber shoes went. Acorn, acorn, who's got the acorn? Acorn, acorn, who's got the acorn? Is it you, or is it me, or is it the squirrel up in the tree? Thank you to Sylvie. Great job. The Chickadees with, yes, Sylvie Tyke on background vocals and a song called Acorn, Acorn. Thank you. Uh, Is there a different part of your persona you have to tap into when you're singing for a group of kids? Not me. I'm like this all the time. (laughs) She is. I have to let go a little bit, which is is good. I have to become like a kid again. I think maybe it's harder for Carmen because she doesn't have kids yet, so... She's, mm-hmm. um, and when, before I had kids, I was petrified of them. I didn't know if somebody would hand me their baby. I'd, no, 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 thanks. I, <laughs> I'm up to here. No, I'm okay. So I think when you don't have kids yet, it's, a, it's harder to relate. And then once you have them, you know how, you know how to talk to them, how to get down on their level. And you do sometimes. Sometimes all the worries of the day are on your shoulder, and then you show up <laughs> at the show, and you kind of have to be, you know, happy the clown (laughs) but then once you you know after you get into it it's just fun and it's actually a a relief to to have the burdens of the day off of you and you can just be silly and crazy it's kind of like therapy i've gone to a chickadees gig kind of depressed or bummed about something and i walk away with 50 hugs and (laughs) i feel great mary carlson carmen nickerson and angel roadie the chickadees thanks so much to all of you for being here thank you thank you That interview with the Milwaukee-based group The Chickadees was recorded and engineered by our Tom May with four-year-old Sylvie Tyke on background vocals. The Chickadees have several concert dates in the Milwaukee area in the next few weeks. There's a link to their tour schedule from our website, wuwm.com slash lake effect. They left us with one more song from their forthcoming CD, a tune called Reduce, Recycle, and Reuse. Plastic, glass, and aluminum cans, they can be renewed. Send them to the recycling plant to get turned into something new. Take your old bags with you back to the store when you go for groceries. And when the cashier says, paper or plastic, say it's cool to just reuse these. And with that, we wrap another week's worth of Lake Effects produced by the extremely hard-working staff of technical director Dan Harmon and the recently returned from vacation Bonnie North with help from producer extraordinaire Paul Kosadowski, production assistant extraordinaire Samantha Garrett, and intern extraordinaire Maggie Kingsbury. I'm Mitch Tyke. Have a great summer weekend, and I hope you can tune in again Monday and every weekday, 10 in the morning, 11 at night, for Lake Effect from WUWMHD, Milwaukee Public Radio. delicious. Like banana peels. Yeah. Do you eat banana peels?